Hey guys, welcome back to Castle Combat TV, and in this video, I will be covering the Age 6 launch set. So, if you guys didn't know, we are now in the 6th Age of Castle Combat, the final battle. So, the Red Pyramid is finally out of the ground. I do not have the map. I don't think the map has been printed at all because the person that made them is out of business. So, unfortunately, we do not have an Age 6 map, but we do have an Age 6 set. And for those wondering what's in the set, it's 18 cards. Some are AI and some are older cards with revamped abilities. So, in the first card we're going to cover is Tritanium. So, these cards are all shiny, but they're or two other in circulation since these cards have been out for a while i wouldn't be surprised if someone has it already so tritanium guarding the red pyramid roll three dice doubles tie triples remove foe from game so basically a um typhoon ability but a red bad guy so pretty decent card there seth star sends our next card epic battle before battle you can bring back one dragon from dungeon to bottom of the deck if you wouldn't back another if seth is defeated he is removed from game a really strong card there moving on to our next card seth star Span's brother it is osiris so osiris star Span, epic battle your entire deck can be legendaries but they must be all blue good or blue bad guys if osiris defeated then you auto lose the game so kind of like a command ability So that is Osiris. Moving on to our next card, it is Char. So Char, the Red Cosmic Dragon Lord. So another Dragon Lord. Char and his foe must rule sixes. Nothing too crazy right there. So Char, he came along with Sestar Spin and Tritanium, the weakest out of the three Cosmic Dragon Lords. So moving on to our next one, we have Cosmos with a Z. So it's not an S like the Elf. So Ice Breath before battle. If you roll higher than your foe's power, then they don't get a battle roll. So that's actually pretty strong. So that's basically an auto win ability. So you're playing against like a five roll, six auto win. Normally Dragon Lords don't really get strong abilities like that but since the blue just blue in general was pretty weak i decided to give them a pretty decent dragon lord that isn't permafrost or wyvern so that is cosmos and i believe that is the last of the non-ai cards so now moving on to our next couple of cards all the cards i'm going to show you are brand new and starting off with the first one that everyone was excited for it is the bog walls the bog wall prevents all cards in the game from losing to equal or higher or higher auto win remove from game abilities so that basically means is if you have this card to the side and it's still active then if you're playing against shroud he, if he rolls higher than your power it doesn't it, it just blocks it there's nothing they can do about it this card basically blocks a bunch of luck based cards but you have to be careful about the wording so if nightshade the necro cloak i think what he says is if you're defeated roll higher then they go to dungeon while you go to winners that does not mean that nightshade auto wins so nightshade does not have the ability block so that's bog wall it's also a purple good guy so it fits right into the meta with purple good and brown good in my opinion I think. and i'm moving on to the next card it is the grail tower so grail tower at any time roll two dice choose highest this is how many rerolls you can have during the game once you have all your rerolls flip the grail tower card over this card sits to the side to the field of battle and the ability can only be used once so if you guys remember the neutral andromeda where if you won you would roll two dice and you'd pick one and that would be the one you could heal exactly it's kind of like the same concept you roll two dice if you roll five and a two, you can pick the five, get five rerolls. And the reason the original idea was only for the Grail Tower to roll one die, but I wanted to give it two to make it at least like viable. So Grail Tower, pretty good card there. It's also a neutral good guy, so it'll fit into all decks. And keep in mind, guys, you can run multiple landmarks. So if you want to run six legends like in your deck and then two to the side, you can definitely do that. Moving on to another landmark, it is the patch. So the patch. Anytime you can deduct one power from Patch's power and bring back one orange bad guy from dungeon to deck. If your foe is using an orange good deck, then the patch is plus three power. Once the patch reaches power zero, flip the card over. So it's basically three guaranteed heals. And if, you, if you're playing against, let's say, orange good, you have six heals, which is really, really strong. So the patch, if you're running an orange bad deck, you definitely want this card because there aren't many cards that are guaranteed heals before battle. I know there's maybe like a couple scarecrows, but those are kind of like swapping, I think. But the patch, very strong card, can definitely create a lot of strong strategies with the orange bad guys. So now moving on to the final landmark, in my opinion, the strongest and the most effective is the red pyramid. So the red pyramid, all red bad dragons on the field of battle, we roll ones. If you use red dice, red pyramid, all red bad guy dragons have their rivalries negated. So really, really strong card. So if you have Infernoth, he can reroll ones if you lose red dice. And Infernoth, I believe his odds of hitting are like 16%. But when you use this card, he goes to 25. So I will ha definitely 100% have a video covering the red pyramid in the proper deck to use. Because remember, it negates dragon rivalry. So you no longer need a command Seth to 
um, really do damage with dragons. So you can have Thermal Magnificent um, AI, you could have Cold the Torch in the same deck, you have Thermax the second all in the same deck, all one color with the rerolls and Inferno, they all get to roll ones too. So really strong card. I will have a video covering the Red Pyramids, but if you get your hands on the Red Pyramid, make a Red Bad Guy Dragon deck. So those are all four landmarks in the set. Now moving on to the Warriors. First card we have is Hollowjack. So Hollowjack, Cursed Rider. If you're playing at Sundown or Night, Hollowjack can re remove a spell if he wins and his power six, and he can roll one. So pretty mid card right there. Moving on to the next, we have Achilles. So if you guys remember, Achilles was a six, but I revamped him, gave him some better art and made him a lot stronger. So big showdown, Achilles can once brown plus one versus legends in battle if achilles is defeated he is removed from game so honestly i'd say that's better than the power six because he gets rerolls as a five against legends and it's not like if he ties he gets removed it's just if he's defeated and that's a ghost that goes for the entire big shot i believe moving on to our next card it is sir scorch so sir scorch before he was torched if sir scorch defeats a dragon then he is power seven for the rest of the game plus three versus dragons in battle and can real ones so all, rivalry all dragons highest power dragon in epic battle and dragon lord so obviously this dude hates dragons so um he can actually become a 10 against dragon so let's say he defeats a dragon um make becomes a seven for the rest of the game and plays another dragon he can become a base 10 and basically has an advantage over every dragon lord moving on to our next card we have let's do necro surge so necro surge this card, it can be really, really strong if you pair it up with the OP Mortis. So, Rivalry Morgana, Morgulis, and Romulus. So, Epic Battle with Undead. Before battle, you can declare Knight of the Dead. You can bring all Undead Warriors with 3 or less power from Dungeon to Deck. All of your non-Undead cards are removed from game. So, really strong card there. So, if you want like an all-Undead deck and then just have and just bring them all back, could be really strong. But if they have Presto, you're basically done for because Presto is like plus 2 versus Undead. Auto negates Undead. You're, you're done. And, and also, his ability covers the Power 3 Nightshade as well, which is also really strong. So now moving on to our next card. It is Odin King, the first Viking. So this is the Odin King from Age 1. Epic Battle, the original Saga Surge. Roll 3 dice, doubles add together, plus your power. Reroll 1s, triples remove foe from game. This card is crazy. One of the best cards in the game, I'd say, despite being an orange good guy. Because if you roll 3 dice, hitting doubles is so is very very likely and not only that you get to reroll once this is definitely the one this is one of the strongest cards one of the strongest ai cards we've ever had a very good idea for, to pick for gauntlet because instead of doubles tie doubles you add them together and you reroll one so i don't know what his minimum power is i'd say his minimum power is like maybe what could his i think his minimum minimum power is a nine i think so Really, really strong card. I was thinking about making a six, but that would just be way too good. And I think he's pretty good at a five. And he calls it a big battle. So really, really strong card right there. I'm not sure what his grade is, but I'm sure he, he's like a very high B, if not an A. So that is Odin King, the first Viking. Moving on to our last three cards. It is Morgulus. So Morgulus, big showdown. Curse, if Morgulus wins or ties around a battle against a good guy or purple foe, they are removed from game. Spirit of Eclipse, uh, become power zero, roll three dice, choose one as your power. So actually... Really good card for the Black Bad Guys. And you might be wondering, why are you still making Black Bad Guy cards? I thought you were supposed to make them worse. Yes, but it's getting to the point where the good guys are just so good that I'm just going to give them, I'm going to give the bad guys one card that keeps a little bit of balance. And also, we're kind of missing the Sword Curs. Um, and it's only right that the son of the Queen of Shadows and the son of, I believe, the greatest general of all time should get that sword. And Morgulus, really strong card there. I think he's one of the best black bad guys right now. Because think about it, you could if you're playing against lowest battle score, drop to a zero and roll three dice, and there's a really good chance to hit a one. Moving on to our final two cards, it is Paragon the Pure. So a brand new Dragon Lord. Um, other than Furrath, I think this is gonna be a really difficult Dragon Lord to get. So Son of Percival, per, uh, Paragon must reroll ones and loses ties. Call out Paragon can search opponent's deck for a or hand for a card and battle them. So rivalry, the card Paragon called out, and Dragon Lords cannot. Cannot be in a deck with bad guys ever, so cannot be hypnotized because um, he's just too pure. I say Paragon is on the stronger end of the Dragon Lords, but one thing I do like when I was designing the card is that he's a rivalry with the card he called out. So what would happen with the old one, Power Four? It was really, really bad. It was not good at all. And sometimes if you would bring out a card like Romulus, first of all, you wouldn't even have an advantage. And second, they would just call an epic battle and then run away. And then Paragon is, you're fighting like a common or something like that. But now, if they call an epic battle, Paragon is forced to follow around the person he called out. So that's just a little detail that I think kind of keeps his ability from being bypassed completely. Now, moving on to the final card of the set, the card you see on the thumbnail, it is Celtic. So Celtic with a Y. So this is an ancestor to Celtic. 
one of the strongest cards in the game. I believe he is the sixth or seventh highest graded card in the game right now and is part of the A plus club. So one of like eight cards. So Moose Trample before battle roll a die. If you roll higher than your foe's power, then remove from game. In battle roll two dice, choose the best real ones. These abilities cannot be negated. Always goes first versus black bad guys. Grandfather of Celtic, ruler of the Fey Forest. Rivalry Boglord, Lore, Celtic, Teddy the Chosen One. So reason why I put Teddy the Chosen One on there is because I don't want the I don't want Celtic and Teddy stacking because Teddy is one of the best cards in the game right now. Um, Spark Guild card shouldn't have been that strong, but unfortunately that's what it had to be. But Celtic, one of the best card in the set by far, and this card makes the brown good guys really desirable. And if people are saying this card's overpowered, yes, absolutely. And if people start using the brown good guys, a very suboptimal faction, then perfect. I would want you to start using those armies because there's one card there. So really strong card there. I honestly think the purple and brown good guy strategy is really really strong but remember brown and yellow could be viable i will have strategy videos coming out after i get these set overview videos out so that's basically everything i have to show you guys and yeah that's basically the entire set i hope you guys enjoyed expect to see one more video tomorrow covering the base set so yeah that's basically everything i have to say make sure you guys like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video